Welcome to curl 7.83.0. This is the uh, release presentation video on April 27, 2022. I am, as you might already know, of course, Daniel Stenberg. I run the curl project. I founded it a long time ago. I work for Wolf SSL. I'm on Twitter. This is my website. <coughs> I'm going to do this presentation in my ordinary way. Also, I have to, I'll try to do this every time. Talk about some numbers on, on, on for this cycle some security details or uh, security advisories we have published some of the new features in this release some of my favorite bug fixes we did and something about what we have pending going forward so let's get into the numbers this is release 207 we have tried it a few times by now um yes this is probably the best release we have done in a long time we got help from 60 different contributors to do this release uh, out of uh, those 29 were new and we are now uh, over 2600 persons in total in the thanks document thank you everyone for helping out out of those 35 people authored commits <coughs> and again a lot of those new 13 this time Thank you everyone who have helped out. And this was then done in a slightly shorter release cycle than previously. You know, we tried to do this um, every eight weeks. So in this time, in this particular release cycle, we did it three days shorter because the previous release cycle was three days longer. And we try. Uh, I wanted to get back on every Wednesday. So Wednesday, eight weeks, Wednesday, eight weeks. So this one was 53 days. We're on uh, slightly over 8,800 days now <coughs> since the inception in 1998. I have the, uh, I don't know if it's fortunate or unfortunate pleasure to tell you about some security advisories we have uh, announced this time. They happened in this particular release because suddenly people put in the effort and found these problems. They're all fairly, well, some of them are, are really old, some of them are just a little old. So the first one being this um, CVE 2022-22576, OAuth2 bearer bypassing connection reuse. And bear with me, there, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about security advisories today and the functionality in curl that is related around connection reuse. So curl keeps a pool of previous connections alive for a while so that when you do a subsequent transfer, it can possibly reuse one of those previous connections again, because reusing an existing connection is much faster and uh, saves a lot of resources and yeah generally a, a good thing to do um, so that is what curl tries to do and in this case if you're using OAuth 2 which is a, a way to authenticate um, a transfer and you're using it with one of these protocols SMTP IMAP POP3 LDAP uh, or their TLS versions curl could accidentally reuse the wrong connection when you did uh, a follow-up transfer um, just because the check for connection reuse was flawed so it could accidentally do the wrong use the wrong connection for a subsequent transfer and therefore of course a, a, an application could, could behave wrongly or send data over the wrong connection so it could of course then end up in sadness and uh, unhappy faces another thing that we got reported and this is one of those problems that have been with us since I think since curl 4.9, which was uh, released in, uh, uh, well, 2019, uh, 18, uh, well, over 20 years ago. So uh, basically it is when you're trying, when you're doing a redirect, and we can only do redirects from HTTP or HTTPS, and you follow that redirect to another protocol like FTP or FTPS, those are the only ones that are enabled by default. And that you do that re redirect to the same host name. Curl would not clear the credentials when you do that redirect. So you, if you pass it on creden credentials to the first HTTP URL and you would follow the redirect to the same host name, but another protocol, Curl would send on the credentials wrongly because it's not supposed to do that unless you asked it to. And actually changing number and it would also do it for a TLS SRP less 
uh, common things. Another connection reuse flaw that we got, the third security advisor here, is um, um, <coughs> if you're doing a connection or you're doing a transfer that sets up a connection, you're doing the transfer using IPv6 numerical addresses and you're using zone ID in that numerical address. Zone ID is a way to, to well, it's a way to specify the IPv6 address and tell you on which interface to connect to that local IPv6 address because this only works for local IPVs or non-globally scoped IPv6 addresses. And if you were using or if you are using zone IDs in those numerical IP addresses, curl could accidentally use the wrong connection when it uh, does a subsequent transfer, again using the connection pool in, in for subsequent transfers. A very specific for exactly for IPv6 numerical addresses using non global scoped addresses and when using zone IDs in there. It shouldn't hurt too many users, but if you are one of those users, it could be bad. And a second one, so you can see the pattern here, redirects or and connection reuse. So in this case, it is for re another redirect problem. When you're redirecting from HTTP or HTTPS to um, again to HTTP and HTTPS on another port number on the same host. Curl was supposed to not leak custom authentication or cookie headers that the application might pass, but it did. That's the CVE 2022 Read up about all those specific details in the documentation on the Curl site because we have documented everything with detail exactly which version numbers it covers exactly what we propose to do a link to the patches and so on so you should be safe um, neither of those problems are you know the sky is falling kind of problems but they might be bad if you're one of those who actually do i mean get affected by this particular flaws these particular flaws i we did not announce any reward amounts yet for these four flaws uh, we do intend to reward them with, uh, I mean, monetary rewards uh, properly, but this is because we have changed the bug bounty setup since the last time we rewarded anyone, and now the, the reward amounts are set later in the process, so we, after we have announced the flaw. So it'll, it might take us another week or so until we know how much money we are going to pay them, or, well, yeah. things that we did this <coughs> week then, apart from fixing security problems, we added new things. So <coughs> we added two new functions to the API set. This is the function number 87 and 88, I believe, and they are for accessing specific HTTP header uh, um, response headers in, in the previous HTTP transfer. And the first one here, curl easy header, is for ex uh, accessing and picking a single header out of, in, uh, out of a response. And the next one, the curl easy next header, is for iterating through all headers. And they actually work on all kinds of headers, like in the connect request for proxies, for trailers, for uh, pseudo headers, for HTTP and HTTP2 and HTTP3 and so on. So read up on them, and they're, they're pretty detailed, and, and you can do a lot with them. And thanks to that new API in the libcurl, we introduced the new way to access individual headers for the command line tool. So by using this dash w function, the write out is the long version name of it, you can output specific headers like this, or all of them as JSON like this. Blam, one JSON object with all received headers um, uh, formatted as a JSON object. The, I'm sure that JSON uh, using people will appreciate this little thing. We also uh, uh, introduced a, a command line option named, I hope aptly, and I hope it works as, you know, people find it sort of self-explanatory at least. And this is the same option name that a lot of other command line tools already have, called dash dash no clobber. And of course, it means that it doesn't clobber the output file or if you're downloading 
with curl to a particular file name, it will not overwrite that file if that already exists when curl wants to create the file. Curl will then create the file dot a number and increase that number if that number already existed, blah, 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 and increase, increase, increase up to 100. Uh, so instead of overriding, it will add the number. Pretty useful for some kind of scripts and so on. Um, and conversely, there's also this new um, dash dash remove on error, which I also hope is a little bit self-explanatory. It removes file leftovers when curl returns an error. So if you're downloading something to a file and you, you, you get an error during the transfer, curl will not leave the partial file on disk when it returns the error. It will remove the leftovers. Remove on error. And finally, the last thing we added this release um, as a new thing is support for the MSH3 library. This is another SS, uh, sorry, HTTP3 library. Um, so this is the third backend for curl that supports HTTP3. So if yet another way to do it. And I think in particular, this is interesting for Windows users because it uses another way to do it, uh, use the TLS on, on Windows. And people ask me what the difference is between this and the other backends, but I think it is pretty much on par with the other ones. So we just need to try it out and figure it out how, how it works together. I want to emphasize that out of these new things, a lot of this is experimental in this release. And what I mean with experimental is that they are labeled experimental and they are disabled, or rather they are not enabled by default. So if you build curl, ordinary, these features will not be enabled. You need to enable them explicitly in the build to get them in, in your executable. And I, I don't want to uh, discourage anyone from doing this because uh, on the contrary, we need you to try them out, report problems, say, give me a thumbs up if everything works so that we can eventually remove the experimental tag and get them enabled by default in the build so that everyone can take better advantage of them. We did a lot of bug fixes in this release, slightly fewer than the last release, but still more than 100. I think I counted 125 of them. And some of them, I, you know, I, I went through the list, I collected 12 of the, the ones I, I call them my favorite because I figured that they sort of deserve a little in-depth explanation and, 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 you know, digging, digging into them. And, and let's start with some of, <coughs> some of them. First, w one of these silly things that curl uh, hasn't reported uh, errors on for a very long time. So if you use dash capital T and dash D on the same command line for the same URL, you know, one of them says you should do a put, the other one says you should do a post. And you use that for, this for a single URL. What do you mean? Do you want to do a post or do you want to do a put? Curl what uh, previously in in the version you're running, sorry, pre before 7.83.0, it would let it would actually let one of them override the other, and in a slightly quirky way, so it could end up doing a, a, a bad request. Now it'll just error out and say, no, no, you can't do that. You have to select which one do you want. They, they don't combine. I want to sh just tell you this. I don't know exactly what the MCST LCC compiler is, but uh, in curl we have actually we have support for a lot of different compiler systems, setups, architectures, you know, everything. And in this uh, system header, uh, in this public header we call system.h, it's actually curl slash system.h. We have a lot of if defs that need to be set up to handle a lot of uh, specific compiler setups for sizes and types and everything. And that's, we n pretty much need to do that to be as portable as we are. And now we're slightly more portable to this particular compiler. Um, we, another thing that is interesting is that we didn't really handle empty output file names decently. Uh, and of course, usually this is not a problem because you rarely actually use a, a, a blank output file name. Um, so it hasn't been a problem, but someone figured that out that for some reasons he wrote a script or something that ended up with this. So we actually got a seg fault. And now we're managing better 
in several places and a better um, error message actually um, and something else fun you know HTTP2 we have supported it since 2013 I believe so we're approaching well maybe nine years uh, it turns out that where if w when we're getting a stream uh, you know when HTTP2 you get streams over the same connection you could get multiple streams over the same connection so if you would for example get two streams over the same connection and one of them you would stop as I call it here on your own wheel because you would return uh, to, to libcurl say hey stop this stream I don't care about it anymore uh, I've had all the data I want uh, go away and you, the other stream would continue curl would actually not reset that stream properly so that the stream would just go on and continue to send data to you but curl would ignore it because uh, the user had said stop so it would just be a waste of bandwidth really because the data would arrive but nobody would uh, care about it now we reset it properly and stop it the way we should have done a long time ago an improvement a bug fix another uh, related thing because this is also HTTP2 uh, we can do well conditional request based on time basically it says uh, only get this resource if it's newer than this or older than this and in um, uh, when you do that with HTTP2 and, and you say oh this is too old we don't want get we don't want to get this data anymore we should just close that stream not close the connection which we didn't do now we do and similar th we also did this if you do it um, if you do a range request uh, over HTTP for example you want to get you know I want to get byte 200 to 400 out of these resource or something like that and we end up in a case when I want to get this but we already have that downloaded we would also close that entire connection instead of just closing the stream um, which we do now so you know slightly polished HTTP2 behavior especially for for applications doing multiple streams over, over HTTP2 uh, uh, multiple streams to over the same connection um, some other HTTP sort of cleanups and, 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 and the janitor things we now reject header contents re uh, well we not only reject the header contents we'd actually reject the entire transfer if uh, HTTP headers arrive with null bytes so if you end up with a octet zero in the in a header curl will now refuse reviews it because it's not allowed in HTTP, HTTP at all by, I mean in the standards by definition and the reason uh, why we uh, why I've added this now you know I've supported HTTP for 24 years so why, why should we suddenly now stop supporting null bytes two reasons first I want to unify and, and make it consistent behavior when we build with hyper instead of curl so hyper already does this because hyper is slightly more stricter on HTTP handling so by by unifying we, we make it easier to behave the same way so the test cases could work the same way and so on and also the, the good old thing that it's really not very good to just be trusting everything just because we can but it's better to be a little bit more strict and say if you don't follow things if, if you don't follow the protocol get out disconnect uh, go away so sort of tighten the bolts a little bit raise the bar a little bit to because null bytes I'm sure they might lead to some nastiness or trickiness down the line if we allow them and pass them on and, and applications and everyone will think that headers will be okay and and we allow bad headers yeah I think that could lead to badness a precaution similarly we also actually now no longer support colon less HTTP headers and again this is the same thing there you cannot send a colon less HTTP header over HTTP 1 um, uh, without because it's not uh, legal it's not allowed so per this protocol, protocol specification you can't do that and again there hyper doesn't allow it but now we unify how curl handles this so just a little bit of a little bit stricter it shouldn't affect anyone anyone in, in a harmful way but if it does let me know because it could yeah 
who knows what kind of interesting things we will find out because of that <coughs> uh, other things i someone reported a problem with uh, mqtt and it was just a silly thing but if if uh, the tcp connection got disconnected at one particular point in the uh, protocol communication curl would not detect that and it will try again and try again and try again in a busy loop really uh, annoying and a highly stupid mistake no it doesn't do that anymore i collected sort of ng tcp2 changes and, and called them numerous improvements because there were too numerous and too many to mention them specifically but i think we listed maybe 10 of them uh, in this particular release so tatsuhiro who's the main ng tcp2 author he has really been helping us and contributing a lot so doing HTTP 3 with ng tcp2 should now be much better than before it's, it should be faster more reliable and everything still experimental of course http3 support another thing uh, we clean uh, i clean, cleaned up a little bit so as we're as we've introduced support for hyper in curl which is also experimental but anyway hyper supports http2 as well so hyper is the second backend in curl that speaks http2 which means that it is also the first backend to notice when we check things internally when we do the wrong checks. So we didn't check for HTTP2, we checked for NGHTTP2. So I had to clean up a little checks somewhere. So if you build, for example, hyper with embed TLS or hyper with NSS, it should now work for HTTP2 as well. Just some, you know, Im improved hygiene and, and fixing minor mistakes. And <coughs> this, is a, this is a great one. Uh, and, and bear with me, this is, uh, you'll like this one uh, curl now escapes the question mark in code generated with dash dash lib curl and why you say you think why why would we do that why would you escape the question mark but okay you know first dash dash lib curl generates c code out of the command line so you write a command line you add dash dash lib curl and the file name and it'll generate c code into that file c code that would when compiled will generate an application that runs the same command line that you just used right or roughly the same command line because it's it's not a complete match but anyway if you use <laughs> you could basically trick the final source code by using trigraphs in in a string on the command line so if you would use a uh, question mark question mark dash uh, you should read up on, on the in the blog post because uh, uh, again Harry figured out an, a really awesome way to sort of get a trigraph version of things into the string and when you build that source code later it would do something uh, that you not at all expected pretty much a sneak away to smuggle in bad code into a dash dash libcurl source code um, <coughs> It usually doesn't work because trigraphs are usually disabled when you build with modern compilers but still <laughs> it, it, I, I was amazed it was an, a, it's a fascinating sort of attack or smuggling attempt and we con uh, sort of we avoid the attempt by escaping the question mark we could possibly do it some other way as well or instead but I, I did it this way and i think it's harmless and what is an easy fix um, anyway read up on that little attack was fun um, i i was impressed those were just 12 of these things as i mentioned we had 125 bike fixes most of them of course pretty you know boring and mundane things so yes, the next release is probably going to be 7.84.0 because that's the way we do. Usually people have changes and, and want to merge them soon, as, well, as soon as we open the merge window. Hopefully we do that Monday, coming Monday. So we have things to do. We have more HP3 fixes pending, I hope. We have a bunch of known bugs for HP3. Um, they are they tend to be a little bit complicated <coughs> we have outstanding pull requests for features like the stream window size uh, 
and this uh, a new one for session ID cache size to increase so applications who want to increase the cache size for for caching ses session IDs and why do you want to do that well it the session ID cache helps making faster subsequent TLS handshakes uh, more hyper improvements we're down to 15 disabled uh, test cases when hyper is enabled we want to get that down further ideally it's zero of course I have a new option uh, command line option proposed called dash dash rate right now it's for setting a maximum uh, transfer rate really I want to do I want to transfer X number of URLs with curl and they should not be done faster than in uh, this many transfers per time unit uh, I have a pull request already it, it seems to work pretty simple I think uh, it's been requested before <clears throat> and there's this uh, export import session IDs pull request it's been with us for a while let's see if we can get to that maybe the follow no custom method pull request that's mine I don't sense a strong sort of you know desire from anyone to actually have this support so I'm sort of postponing it so maybe I'll, I'll just bury it for a while longer I think uh, unless someone speaks up I think I'm just going to you know let it be there maybe rebase it and see if it still survives and just keep it on, on the back burner for a while so those are some of the things usually we get a lot of surprise pull requests along the way anyway so now uh, what we will actually end up with in, in in june 22 we don't know and do submit your pull request for whatever you want changed or fixed or improved or see in curl um, what's fun is that this next release is going to be after curl up uh, 2022 in, in san francisco so we're going to have a, had an opportunity to meet face to face before this release We'll see wh what happens um, as a result of that and of course we're sticking to the schedule now so this is back again to the eight week release schedule uh, ideally hopefully uh, cross fingers um, so on wednesday in eight weeks we hope to do the next release and oh, of course by the next year march next year march 2023 where that's the that's goal to do the curl uh, 8.0 the version 8 800 I guess uh, uh, release um, you know to get the all the uh, numbers and version numbers sort of reset and start start again from from clean slate I don't think we will do any particular you know bells and whistles or particular features we will just bump it to version 8 and say yoohoo and, and uh, go on from there uh, I want to emphasize that I work on, on curl full-time. I work for Wolf SSL. Um, so get your company to s pay a support contract or ask me to help you with whatever problems you have. Uh, I can help you tomorrow if you just contact my guys and we have it set it up. Um, of course, if you have any bugs, problems, issues, something that is not working the way you think, the documentation doesn't explain it the way you to make you understand, file an issue and we will get to it as soon as we can. If you find uh, something that is security related, you know, um, you suspect a security problem, submit it here and on our Hacker One page. We will, you know, keep it under wraps or uh, privately and discuss it until we have um, figured it out and, and, and done everything we need to do to publish it and we do that of course as soon as we can usually we try to get the publication of vulnerabilities uh, synced with the next release so usually no more than 56 days away thanks to these sponsors we have uh, a fund and, and these are uh, recurring donators so here are the the main sponsors of the curl project we use the sponsored money to pay for developers to attend curl up we pay for bug bounties and pay for some other curl related things for stickers marketing stuff like that so whatever you sponsor to curl we promise to spend it on curl related activities yes you can see that there aren't that many big 
fancy company names in that list, but they're awesome, all of, them, all of our sponsors. So this is Carl. Thank you for uh, listening to this presentation and uh, see you in eight weeks.